Meyer. First up is someone whose work I've actually followed for quite some time. Uh, before I bring him out here, Paul uh, has written a book called Grouped. Uh, he is also someone who has written quite a bit on the idea of social ties, weak ties, strong ties. And he's also said to be the inspiration, or at least one of the original idea generators around Google Circles, which was eventually put into Google+. Now, Paul is at Facebook, and he's the global head of brand design. So let's please welcome Paul Adams. Right, see you in a bit. Right. Hey, guys. I'm kind of afraid to put that there. I might spill water and equipment don't seem to go together, but yeah, over here. All right, <laughs> better safe than sorry. Um, so thanks to Brian and, and, the, and the team for having me here. Um, so I work at Facebook. Uh, my job is basically to help the world's kind of biggest brands and agencies figure out uh, how to be successful on the platform. So typically, um, you know, I do a lot of talks. Uh, and over the last year, I've talked a lot about influence, about how people influence each other. Um, a lot about mobile, about how the web's been rebuilt around people. And you know, I'm going to talk for about 10 or 15 minutes, then Brian's going to come up, we're going to have a Q&A. Um, but what I wanted to do, you know, I've noticed a change over the last kind of 12, 6 to 12 months, which is um, people have stopped asking us uh, about these transformational changes. You know, it's, it's clear that Facebook and other social platforms are very important. It's clear that the web is definitely changing. Um, there's big technology companies, big and small, that are reorienting themselves around this idea. So people have basically started asking us what they should do. So what I wanted to do was basically give you guys um, six things that I think uh, we've learned through trial and error, things that, things that work based on us thing, trying things that didn't work. Um, because I think all these kind of six principles are very important for all businesses, whether you're a marketer, developer, technology company, media company. Um, I'm going to talk about Facebook a lot. I'm going to use a lot of examples from Facebook. That's just because I work there and I know the data and I, I can kind of stand behind the, the things I'm going to show. Uh, but you can apply this to any social platform. You know, whether it's uh, Facebook, Twitter, you know, Jonah from BuzzFeed is just here. You know, these principles should be pretty universal. So um, to make this really concrete, uh, because people always like hammer me on being really, really concrete, really actionable, I'm going to use two examples throughout. One is Lay's and one is Target. Um, Lay's uh, had a re thing recently called Lay's Do Us a Flavor. I'm going to talk about that, examples from that. And Target had a campaign called Give with Target. So I'm going to talk about that. Um, the reason I'm going to talk about these two examples specifically is because the, the engagement was just tremendous. You know, they both had two million, over 2 million active users. They had over 4 million actions. You know, the target saw over 400 million stories. Uh, when, we say, when I say story, I mean a, a distinct thing that appears in newsfeed. Uh, it's our own kind of little jargon. Uh, so 400 million stories. Um, so really, really interesting. And I think the reason that we saw these numbers was because they apply these principles that I'm going to talk through. So let me, let me get into them and stop uh, talking about the periphery. So um, the first, the, I'm going to kind of start at the end. These are the six things. The first one is, the first two are kind of about people. Don't think about sharing and build many lightweight interactions. The second two are about app design or product design. So design the, the feed story first and remove 80% of the features. And the final two, to kind of get more direct into the theme of today and the theme of the conference around kind of operations or how you operationalize social business um, is about shipping products. And shipping basically just means for us launching products into the world. So if you don't ship it, it doesn't exist. Uh, and after you ship it, change it. So there are six things. I'm going to go through them super fast. Um, the first one is, is, is don't think about sharing. So a, a lot of marketers that I speak to um, are pretty obsessed with sharing, how to get people to share their stuff. They talk about things going viral, which means people just sharing it with other people. And what I say to them is, is really sharing is a means to an end. You know, nobody, uh, I'm sure nobody here turns to friends, uh, you know, when they're organizing a dinner party, maybe for Friday night, and says, you know, um, or sorry, uh, I'll use a different example. When um, they're talking to their friends about what they did last night, um, nobody kind of turns to themselves, turns to each other and says, like, what did you do last night? And the person says, you know, I was online, like, all evening, I was, like, sharing, right? Did anyone here say that? Uh, I assume not, right? People say things like, I was catching up with John, or I was checking out the photos from last night, or I was reading this really interesting article, or if it was yesterday, everyone was talking about, you know, Felix Baumgartner and Red Bull and, and that whole amazing thing, right? So people focus on sharing, but sharing is, mean, is a means to an end. And what I basically tell them is to think about the underlying motivations behind why people share. So the right thing to, to think about is why do people talk? 
not why they share. Sharing is a means to an end. And, you know, it's kind of, uh, we could talk about this all day. You know, many scholars and academics have studied this for hundreds and thousands of years. You know, why do people talk? Um, but you can basically boil it, to make it actionable, you can boil it down to three things. People talk to build relationships with others. They talk to manage how others perceive them, which is really their identity and telling the story of their lives. And people talk to help others. So, you know, human beings, this will hopefully make you guys feel good. Uh, we're very, a very altruistic species. We just go out of our way to help one another. We often talk to achieve that. So these are the, this is the kind of key thing. Don't focus on sharing. Focus on why people talk and understand those social motivations. So that's the first of the six things. The second one is to, is to build many lightweight interactions. So often when I'm brought into projects at work, um, not at the beginning, when I'm brought into ones kind of in the middle or at the end, and kind of, hey, Paul, can you get, it, get your eyes on this second opinion and so on? Um, what I see is heavyweight immersive apps. You know, people have basically built a microsite on Facebook. And those things don't perform very well um, for different reasons. One of the main reasons is, reasons is because that's not how people build relationships. You know, people build relationships, whether that's with each other or with a brand, through many lightweight interactions over time. Right? People's perceptions of other people and other brands isn't transformed in one experience commonly. Um, it's usually through many, many, many things. Right? We don't become fr best friends with somebody overnight. Likewise, we don't fall in love, deeply in love with a business or a brand or a company overnight. So people need to focus on many lightweight interactions. So when you think about Lay's, do us a flavor, um, they had a button that said, I'd eat that, right? And it basically looked like this. Um, these are flavors, so for you, those, of you guys, those of you guys who haven't seen Do Us a Flavor, it's, it's, it was just really, really interesting. Lay's are basically going to um, produce, uh, it's kind of crowdsourced, the new crowdsourcing, the new flavor, they're going to produce the next flavor. Um, and the person wins a million dollars, or I think the, uh, I get some percentage of the sales if it's higher than that. But basically, this is an example, a screenshot, a real one that I took from, from my friends and the flavors they created. And you, know, you can see a lot of things that are interesting here. There's a button, I'd eat that. Right? So what Lays could have done is, is put in share, right? get people to share. But remember, sharing is a means to an end. Sharing is a pretty heavyweight action. You know, you got to like share it, then you got to talk about it and say, hey guys, check this out, you know, I made this new flavor, please vote for me, or, right? They didn't, they said, well, how do people naturally talk about these things? And this relates to a lot of the stuff that we see that's successful on the platform is things that map back to real life. They're the things that we see lots of engagement with. So they had this, I'd eat this button, I'd eat that button, and that was a very natural way for people to build relationships with each other, right? Going back to what I was saying earlier. It was also the, the, the kind of flavorizer, I think it was called, was also a really great way for, to help people build identity and control their identity. So the example that I like that my friend JP probably hates the most is, you know, in the top left is Last Call, right? JP's flavor. You know, JP is a cocktail guy. He's a designer, but he uh, likes cocktails a lot, as I'm sure a lot of you guys do. Um, and so he made this kind of last call flavor, right? It says something about who he is. It's kind of, I know that it's a kind of a joke. His friends know it's a kind of a joke. It's very easy for us to go to JP and start talking about it and have a conversation that's meaningful, that's real, that's authentic, all around Lay's and all around this product uh, and this brand. So the third one is to design the feed story first. So, you know, newsfeed is, is, a, is many people's primary experience of Facebook. It's where they spend a lot of their time. Some people, most of their time is looking at newsfeed, whether that's sharing stuff into newsfeed, posting, commenting, liking, or whether it's just consuming stuff from their friends and from the brands that they follow. If you, if you think about the three components, we basically have newsfeed, we have pages, and we have Canvas. And Canvas is basically a big, big white page. So for many creative agencies and, and prof creative professionals, Canvas is the most appealing because it has the least constraints. Right? It's just a big white page. You can pay, basically put anything on it. And so a lot of people build microsites. And what we see, and it's, again, it's heavyweight, it's immersive, it's not based on many lightweight interactions. So what we say to them is, actually, what you should be designing first is the thing that people experience. And the thing that people experience is not Canvas, it's a news feed. Right? It's basically these types of stories. So start by designing this first, the thing that people experience, and then reverse engineer how to make the best story possible. So I'll show you the two examples from Lay's and from Target. These are the stories that Lay's created. So, um, you know, and again, they work very, we were, we, they kind of involved us from the beginning, they work very closely with our creative solutions team, which is the team that I'm a part of. You know, Mark has created a flavor using Do, Lay's Do Us a Flavor. Kevin commented on a flavor. You know, Alicia would eat nine flavors, right? That's the I'd eat that button. 
And what we saw was that people suddenly became incredibly engaged in this. And you may think this is kind of trivial. This is like just, you know, chips and like, this is real life. This is how people communicate. This is what people talk about, right? It's very natural. It's very real. It's very authentic. And Lays as a business is in the middle of all this, you know, identity, building relationships. So we just saw a lot of banter, a lot of gossip, a lot of crazy flavors, and a lot of crazier responses to those flavors. Um, same with Target, right? They designed this story first. Keenan voted for a school using Give with Target. Really nice newsfeed story. Again, they're tapping into a sense of identity, specifically like a local community, right? They're helping people, first of all, feel something about the community that they're in, whether that's the school they went to, the school their kids went to, and then helping people you know, have conversations about those things and build relationships around having some kind of common goal. Right? They designed this first, the story first, and then figured out how they're going to make that happen. So the newsfeed story first. The fourth thing is to remove 80% of your product. Right? So I mentioned earlier, you know, often when I kind of see a lot of this stuff, it's kind of halfway through, very heavyweight, um, you know, heavily designed and so on. And basically all this means is, is rootless prioritization. Right? Do one simple thing. And the reason for that is the paradox of choice. Right? We often see people building apps or building things, not just on Facebook, but generally for the web, building products, other marketers building products, you know, and that's kind of where a lot of this is headed. Um, and basically, they have 20 ideas, and so put all of them in, right? It's like loss aversion. It's kind of like, well, feature 17 could be the one that tips everyone over the edge. We've got to have it in. If we don't have it in, we won't figure it out, right? And what that basically means is people show up, and, and you know, if there's traffic driving to this destination or they get, get there organically, they see 20 things, and it's like the paradox of choice. It's like the more choices you give somebody, the less likely they are to act on any of those choices. Right, so it's kind of ruthless prioritization. If you look at these two things, Target and Lays, very simple, right? Target, it's like, help us give us 2.5 million to support schools. What can you do here? One thing, find your school and vote for it. Everything else here is just social proof to you know, increase motivation for people to act and build that sense of community. One thing, find the school. Same with Lays, what do you do? Three-step process, name your flavor, choose the ingredients, and then add some more details, right? A big box in the middle, everything else around it is copy, kind of artistic direction given some kind of brand, you know, a sense of brand identity, right? Dead simple, one thing. Everything else, lots of other ideas you could put in here, lots of cool things you could add in. The more you add in, the less likely it is that anybody's gonna do anything. So the fifth, and I would argue the most important, is that if you don't ship, it doesn't exist, right? People spend months and months in boardrooms, on whiteboards, in Photoshop, figuring out what they're going to build, right? One of the problems with social design is that people, us, are very complex. Identity, relationships, these are incredibly nuanced, subtle, complex topics. And you don't really know how people are going to react to it. So you've got to ship it, and you've got to start learning. The sooner you ship it, the sooner you'll start learning. You know, and we basically say that building beats talking, right? You can spend six months, eight months, a year trying to build something perfect, or you can build something and, and you know, I would argue you can build something in six weeks. You can ship it and start learning, right? There's no need to have this big, grand extravaganza when you ship something. Design, build, ship in six weeks. And if anybody in your development team, in your agency says that that's not possible, it's possible, right? Facebook, huge company, a lot of users, not a huge company, but a huge user base. Um, we ship code every day, right? This is operational. You just need to change how you work, change how you design stuff, change how you develop stuff, it's totally possible to design, build, ship stuff in six weeks. And the final thing, the sixth thing, and then Brian and I will have a chat about some of this stuff, is after you ship it, change it. People will use things in ways you will never have predicted. And I've been wrong way more often than I've been right about how I think people will use this stuff. And I study it intensely, far too nerdily, probably for too long. Um, and one of the, the kind of things that I like to describe this is, is basically an analogy with architecture, which is, if you talk to the designers in Facebook, if you talk to a lot of the product people in Facebook, a lot of the engineers, a lot of them actually don't talk about technology or the internet. They talk about things like buildings and architecture and urban planning and city planning because the only other place really in the world, right, Facebook we announced recently over a billion active users, the only other places in the world with millions and millions of people interacting with each other in lots and lots of different ways are cities, right, for the most part. And so we look at things like buildings, and one of the things we look at is, when you, when you, you know, urban planners have the best of intentions, and what happens? This happens, right? People walk through the hedge because they're like, well, I'm not like walking all the way around it. I'm going to walk through it, right? 
or you know, people have beautifully landscaped campuses, and what happens? Everyone walks straight across the grass, creating a big diagonal, muddy path. And so what we, what we kind of advocate for is build something really quick, really fast, ship it, basically put the buildings in place, and then watch how people use it, and iterate really, really fast, and set yourself up to iterate really fast. Right? Again, this is operational. This is about having designers, developers ready to build, iterate, change code every single day. So that's it. Um, so I'll leave you with those six things. Um, Brian's going to come out, and we're going to have a chat. So as Brian comes out, I'll say thank you. Wow, that was really awesome. So have a seat. We have, uh, we actually have some time for some conversations. So first of all, nice design on the slides, but I guess it better be if you're talking about brand design. Well, I stole, <laughs> I stole the visual design from other people at Facebook who are better than me. <laughs> That's true. Well, I will say this, though. It, uh, for those who are following the playoffs, it does send a nice shout out to the San Francisco Giants in their, terms of their colors. Yeah, baseball is not my strong suite. <laughs> rugby. rugby well, you know, I'm, I'm sure we could all share a story about rugby. Um, maybe not. <laughs> yeah. All right, but I got. I, I want to. I found that fascinating. I also want to bring it back to just from how I've grown to know you and your work because um, I, I like to think of myself as an aspiring social scientist. I'm always looking, you know, at, at how social science plays a role in, in engagement. And I'd love to tie it into the work you're doing today as well as just the work you've done over the years, the research you've done over the years. You quite brilliantly wrote about how people organize their relationships in certain ways. And you sort of characterize that based on you know, the real life uh, and how that sort of plays into the online life. Now, I want to draw it into something that I think is a, re a very recognized controversial moment that affected Facebook shortly before the IPO. And that was GM's move to pull all advertising. I took a moment to study at least some of their top line advertisements. And I applied it to your thinking, knowing that we were going to have an opportunity to talk. And I couldn't necessarily see or follow a thread that showed that they recognized which contextual groups that they were looking at and how they would then redesign those ads, both in imagery and in language, and then ultimately the experience after clicking it to those contextual groups. So I was wondering if you could just sort of break it down in, in, in layman's terms for us, sort of the idea of how the nature of relationships within Facebook sort of affect how you should think through designing marketing, not just marketing in terms of imagery, but also marketing as an experience, as we've been talking about this afternoon. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is what I spend uh, all day and a lot of the nights thinking about, too many nights thinking about. Um, you know, at the end of the day, like for me, it's pretty simple, which is um, brands are a part of our lives, a very important part of our lives. And people talk about brands all the time. Um, you know, in chit chat, um, over the, in the water cooler conversations, to friends, in the bar, um, like businesses, brands, not only are they just topical, right? One of the things people talk about is um, what's around them, what's topical, right? Yesterday, we were all talking about a guy jumping from space, right? <laughs> right. Uh, and a brand is very heavily involved in that, so people are talking about that. Um, uh, you know, they also kind of um, show a sense of our identity. Um, a lot of people will associate with brands for very mm -hmm. specific reasons. Mm -hmm. And so I think the key thing to understand is that um, although many of us, many marketers, and, and me in some circumstances, would like people to you know, sit back, and you, let's say you and I are in a bar or mm -hmm. wherever we are having a drink, and I start to give you the 20-minute pitch about this business and why it's great, well, like, 30 seconds in, you're going to be like, will you stop, like, talking at me and, like, let's have a conversation, you know what I mean? Like, it's, um, it's lightweight. Uh, it's many lightweight interactions. It's back and forth. If you look at um, how people talk on Facebook or on any social platform, it's the same as real life, right? right. I say something, you say something back. You say, you know, so I think businesses need to understand that dynamic and how to kind of be successful in it. Right. A lot of it will be through experimentation and, and just learning through failing. Um, um, but I think that's the main dynamic people need to, need to understand and figure out. Well, I understand that you're spending quite a bit of time thinking this through. Are you also helping brands better understand this opportunity? Because I, I certainly see a lot of them taking this old school approach mm -hmm. to Facebook and then getting completely upset when it doesn't give them the type of numbers that they're looking for. So how are you working with them to better understand the opportunity? Yeah, I do. I do spend a lot of my time. Uh, you know, my time is split uh, different ways. You know, I do spend a lot of my time working, going deep with a small number of businesses, small number of brands, um, uh, to kind of you know, help them with very specific initiatives. Um, 
And then the other kind of half of my job is to help scale the knowledge that we have from social science, from, um, uh, and like you, like I'm not a social scientist, I, I didn't study anthropology or social, I just kind of read a, a lot uh, and tried to figure it out. Um, you know, so we just need to um, kind of think about these things um, uh, and experiment. Um, you know, I'm trying to figure out how to scale this knowledge, how to create mm -hmm. principles. That's why I wanted to show everyone these six things today. Right. Um, give people very concrete, actionable advice. You know, we were talking earlier about influence and how that works and groups and virality. And, you know, I could talk about that for 12 hours. I'm sure you don't want me to. Uh, you guys <laughs> definitely don't want me to. Um, but, you know, that's, uh, that's not the best approach. Right? We need something that's kind of over, a little bit oversimplified, a little bit overgeneralized but it's actionable and concrete, and people can go and build stuff, right. launch it, ship it, and see how, see how it goes, and then iterate. Well, I certainly, I mean, for those who have that 12 hours to sort of spend time with you, uh, he has a book out called Grouped, and I've read it, and it, it really does dive into this deeply in a way that helps you understand how to contextualize your creative, how to contextualize your engagement. Um, one of the things I thought was fascinating about the GM news was that they had said we were going to pull, I think it was a $10 million ad budget, but that they were going to still continue to invest their $30 million earned and own, no, own media budget. So the balance there seems incredibly skewed. So $10 million on paid, $30 million on own. What's the mix? What's the right mix in terms of Facebook engagement? What do brands need to really think about? Uh, obviously, they must find something working for them on, on the own side of things. But I think we could all get better. Is there a right sort of balance that brands need to think about? Um. I think every brand should strive to find the right balance. I think the, the balance is going to be different for every business, you know, and that depends on a lot of things. It depends on the public, public general public perception of the brand. It depends on um, how they've performed on Facebook or any social platform to date, um, how many fans they have, what kind of engagement they have historically, what did they post about, how do they perform. Like all of those things are going to are going to play a role. Um, I don't think there's one magic number. I think every business will be slightly different, but. Um, you know, I think certainly paid media is an important, compo a very important component. Like if you look at Lay's and Target, paid media was a, a very important component of both of those uh, initiatives. Um, what the balance is specifically, I, 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 I don't know. Um, and again, I think it would be different. That's an honest answer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I don't think anyone knows. I think um, everybody needs to go and start experimenting and mm -hmm. um, investing in things and see what works and what doesn't. Um, uh, you know. The kind of principle around all this is, is basically repeating what, what Jonah said earlier is, um, you know, a lot of our products that we built, like I worked in the product team um, all last year in the first years of Facebook on sponsored stories, page posts, is to look at the things that naturally fit within the ecosystem, fit within the context of how people are using Facebook, um, and kind of boost the distribution of those stories. Do you, you know, with the small amount of time we have left, do you have any advice that, you know, aside from experimentation, I mean, that you would love to leave with these folks who are really fighting the good fight within the organization to get them to see differently? What is it that you feel that they could best take away from that? Yeah, I think, um, you know, one of the things that I, uh, one other takeaway, if I was to give one other one, um, I think experimentation is, is the most important, is, um, is not to go all out. Right? It's kind of repeating what I was saying earlier. Like mm -hmm, the, mm -hmm. the, the kind of like huge pitch to the leadership of the company and then the huge project that takes a year and then shipping it and then maybe it not working out as, as you, because you will never be able to predict, fully predict human behavior and social behavior in particular. Um, I think sometimes it's better to go under the radar and um, you know, experiment with some different initiatives mm -hmm. and um, uh, and see how they go. You know, I think one of the things that you, you often see with a lot of very successful social products is that they grew slowly but steadily. Right. Right. Like there's, you know, people, it's not this huge launch followed by 10 million users and then a billion. It's, right. you know, Pinterest is a great example. Pinterest launched, I think, in 2008, uh, maybe it was 2009, right? But we only ever really heard about it maybe last year for most people, <laughs> right? Because they... I know you can't get away from it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that what I hear is sort of the underlying tones as well is this idea that really brands, as they experiment and as they iterate, as they fail, as they succeed quickly and, and, and quicker and quicker as they go along, is that there's sort of undertone of performance and performance metrics and this performance ideology that I, I think is actually going to be a good driver for that type of experimentation where 
just judging the success based on old criteria just doesn't seem to make sense anymore. But how you're structured sort of around this campaign mentality isn't necessarily optimized for performance optimization. So I, I guess, would you leave any final thoughts on, on how to inspire us to just leave here and think differently, get everybody sort of rallied with the, with the troops? Yeah, I mean, the, I, I guess the one, thing, the one thing I'd add that I haven't mentioned yet is, um, and I often talk about it in, in different talks, is, uh, is mobile. So I think the three things, I mentioned Newsfeed earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, I think analytics is critical, like look at, look at data. The data is there, you know, you experiment, see what works, invest more behind that, mm -hmm. see what doesn't work, stop investing in that. That's what, <laughs> kind of basic. Um, but mobile is, mobile is the future, right? And right. mobile to me is not phones, it's not tablets, it's um, the ability to access any information about anything, any brand, no matter where you are, right? And that is gonna fundamentally, just the same way the car, uh, transform society with suburbia and big box retail, which totally change commerce. Mobile is going to fundamentally alter the economics of commerce um, in ways that we can't predict. But people need, if you want to be ahead of the, well, not even ahead, if you don't want to be behind, right. mobile is, is um, where people should be investing their time. All right, well, thank you so much for your time. All right, You've no worries. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much.